Welcome to Faber International Church to our English worship service. The Lord is great and He is mighty, and we ought to worship Him in truth and in spirit. Let's turn to the scriptures. Let's turn to Psalm, Psalm 87. Psalm 87 is a very powerful, powerful scripture. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for the glory of God right here with us. And we plead the blood of Jesus to cover over the doorposts and the door frames of all of our hearts. And we agree with everything the blood speaks concerning us. Anything that is not of the blood, we cut off in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Psalm 87, verse 1, of the sons of Korah, a psalm, a song. He has founded his city on the holy mountain. Praise the Lord. The Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the other dwellings of Jacob. The gates of Zion. Glorious things are said of you, city of God. Indeed of Zion it will be said, this one and that one were born in her, and the Most High himself will establish her in the name of Jesus. The Lord will write in the registry register of the peoples, this one was born in Zion. As, as they make music, they will sing, All my fountains are in you. So in Jesus' name we declare, We are the saved ones. We have been redeemed. Our fountains are in the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's worship Him in truth and in spirit, because He is worthy of all of our worship. Father God, we pray that You'll be enthroned above our praise and worship in this hour right now, that Your presence your glorious, glorious presence will be lifted up in our midst. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.
God, the blood you bring us to come into your presence. And as we are in your presence, Father God, we come to worship you in truth and in spirit. Hallelujah. And we are so thankful, Father God, it is you who lead us alone. There is no other one and there is no other one. We are so thankful because we are in our presence.
we didn't know. Baptize your people with the Holy Spirit and with fire. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Father, we are praying and we are expecting great revival to spark up in our midst. And we pray that you would do it and do it again. Hallelujah.
to be able to be spirit and fresh. So that our heart and our life will be fully dedicated to you. Fill us, O Father God, with your Holy Spirit and flesh. Let your presence be established above our praise and worship. And we give you praise, glory, honor, wisdom, power, and dominion, faith. Yes, Father God. All knowledge, all wisdom belongs to you. You are worthy of all of our praise and worship. In Jesus' mighty name. The Lord, our Heavenly Father, Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. <coughs> Father, you're so worthy of all of our praise and worship. We pray that you will spark up revival in our midst. Because you are worthy, you have prophesied concerning uh, Toronto revival and also the related areas, Hamilton. We know, Father God, you are faithful. We receive from you your plans for Canada. Hallelujah. Great revival in our midst. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Now we're going to pray uh, for the offerings. The greatest act of worship is giving unto the Lord. He is love. Father God fills our heart with His love. And now, as we praise and worship Him, we're declaring Him the Lord of our lives. Let's turn to the scripture. Yes, turn to the scripture to Genesis chapter 14 from verse 18. Genesis chapter 14 from verse 18. As we prepare our hearts to sow unto the Lord, that's giving, seed time and there's harvest. You sow a seed to the Lord, He multiplies back to you the harvest. And as you tithe to the Lord, you return to Him from all your increases. His holy tithes and that He's going to lavish a blessings upon you. Genesis 14 from verse 18. Melchizedek, king of Salem, and that's Christ Jesus, the high priest, the mediator of God for us. Melchizedek of Salem, Salem means peace, brought out bread and wine, now that's Holy Communion. He was priest of God most time, and he blessed Abram. Now, Abram means Abraham, he is our father of faith, and he has received from God. So we too, in faith, we are also children of Abraham. We are children of faith because Abraham is the father of faith and we receive this blessing. Blessed be Abram and blessed be us, the children of faith. By God Most High, creator of heaven and earth. And praise be to God Most High who delivered your enemies into your hand. In Jesus' name we decree and we declare right now. Father God's blessing sit upon us, the children. Yes. And also, God has delivered our enemies into our hands. And we declare, shut down your hands like this now, we declare to our enemies that God has delivered to us. You are defeated in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. Now that's a tithe. Uh, we don't want to receive from the world. The king of Sodom is the king of the world, which is against God. Said to Abram, give me the people. He wants souls. He wants people dead. And he says, go. You keep the goods for yourself. Go and run and get the money for yourself. And get the material wealth for yourself. What did Abraham say to him? But Abram said to the king of Sodom, With raised hand have I sworn an oath to the Lord, God most high, creator of heaven and earth, that I will accept nothing belonging to you. Who? The devil. Prince of the world. Not even a thread or a stripe of, a, of or a stripe or the stripe of a sandal, so that you will never be able to say, I made Abram rich. Hallelujah. Now let's turn to the PowerPoint. We're gonna speak of I'm gonna speak, speak a blessing over everyone who is a tither right now. In Jesus' mighty name, Father God, I ask that you will release your blessings. You open up the heavens and you release and pour out blessings so much unto us that we don't even have room enough to contain. Let it be for us who are the tithers in the mighty name of Jesus. And that you will rebuke the devourer and that you are going to cause the fruits of our, of our vine to not cast before their times. Yes, God takes away the spirit of death and untimely death in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. And nations shall call us blessed. We are the land that the Lord delights in, in the mighty name of Jesus. For every tither, and now I speak a blessing for everyone who is sowing a seed unto the Lord. As I've mentioned, seed time and harvest 
In Jesus' mighty name, when you sow a seed, Father God is going to cause the measure of harvest to come back to the measure of your seed. And according to the nature you sow to Him, according to that nature, He's going to multiply back to you. He's going to cause men to pour back into your laps, pressed down and shaken together and running over. And I pray for 30, 60 or 100 fold for you. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Amen. Now for everyone who is um, giving by e-transfer, this is the address, favorinternationalchurch at gmail.com. And you can designate the items you want to give. Uh, for those who are giving by uh, writing a check, please write the English name for the church only. And that is Favor International. You can bracket the word church. The name is actually Favor International. And you can send it to our mailbox. Now that you have planted, yes, you shall receive a harvest. That's a sure thing because God is faithful to watch for His words to perform. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And you can find the steps for giving on our website, favorIC.ca. Now, uh -huh. today we're going to talk about the end time prophecies and the present events. This is the, oh, I think this is E instead of D. This is the fifth topic, actually. It's called the religious convergence. The religious convergence is happening. And this is um, a, a significant event in the end times, which we need to take a note of. Um, Father God, I pray that your Holy Spirit will direct us and you'll pour out yourself unto us so that we will know the end time events and that you would anoint us and equip us to know what to do so that we will be the church that will rise up and shine. Father God, we pray to honor Jesus Christ and lift up the throne of Father God above our praise and worship. I pray, Lord, that you're going to touch us, you're going to speak to us, and gear us, Lord, and that you would cause us to be ready for where we are in year 2023, February the 18th. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Now we're going to talk about religious convergence because this is happening. Uh, just a few things of reminder. The prophecy of the end times Prophecy of the end times is actually in progress. Now, we know from Matthew 24, let's take a look at Matthew 24 from verse 3. Jesus already warned us, do not be deceived by men and do not be afraid. There's two things he already said to us. Number one, it is our responsibility to stay in the Lord and it is God's responsibility to protect us. But you stay in the Lord so that you will not be deceived by people. And you believe in the Lord because He says, He says, fear not, then do not be afraid. Now as Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to Him privately. So only the disciples know about this. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? What will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Now this is powerful. End of the age is the last seven years for the Jews. The time of Jesus coming, well, they don't know. We pray for rapture. <laughs> yes, hallelujah. Oh, well, now, Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you. Today we're going to talk about religious deception. Jesus answered, watch out. That means we need to take precaution. We need to be on the alert. Who is going to cause us to be aware of things? Holy Spirit living inside of us. So we might as well give ourselves over entirely to Holy Spirit because we cannot protect ourselves from temptation nor deception. So I want to pray this prayer and if you want to join me to commit our all to Him, let's pray this together. It's a Heavenly Father. I have heard your word. I have come now to commit and recommit my all to you. You own my life. I don't own my life. Jesus' truth lives inside of me because Jesus' life in the Holy Spirit is living inside of me. Lead me into all truths, Holy Spirit. If any deception would be in my atmosphere, that you would lead me to remove those things. Help me to be guided by you, Father God, because Jesus prayed. Lead us Father God, lead us not into temptation. We ask, Father God, Jehovah Rohi, 
the shepherd to lead us so that we will not fall into temptation that we will not enter temptation nor deception in Jesus name amen amen Jesus said watch out watch out or be on the alert no one would deceive you people deception will come through people for many will come in my name claiming now they come in Jesus name they are coming in they're using the name of Jesus and they say oh I am the Messiah if you hear this run away you know run away from those influences and the and Jesus own word said this kind of a claim will deceive many people so we're going to talk about in the end times the greatest deception is no other than religious deception because they come in Jesus name and in the title of being the Messiah now we know eventually the Jews will be fully deceived by signing a um, seven-year peace treaty with the Antichrist whom they believe to be the Messiah that's the greatest deception for the Jewish people on the earth when it is the Jews then we know the spiritual sequence is Jews first and Gentiles second so now in the beginning when Jews received the Messiah uh, born in their midst but then they rejected him so at the rejection of the Jews salvation comes to the Gentiles first now this is powerful so the Gentiles become the bride of the Lamb hallelujah now the spiritual sequence is when the Jews get deceived the, the Gentiles will fully be deceived because the deception for uh, the Jews would be national deception the whole nation therefore with that those who are in the seven last seven years of the Jews the years of tribulation all the all the Gentiles people they can also be deceived by the Antichrist now Jesus did say also other things you will hear of wars and rumors of wars but see that see to it that you are not alarmed this is powerful Jesus said don't be afraid because he protects us such things must happen but the end is still to come nation will rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom and you can see right now on the news different countries different nations are against each other there will be famines and earthquakes in various places very detrimental earthquakes happened to Turkey just recently and um, earthquakes in Philippines earthquakes in Indonesia earthquakes in Romania many other places so the earth is shaking in birth pangs yes just understand that this is the backdrop of the end times now let's go back to the PowerPoint all these things are the beginning of birth pangs now Jesus said do not be deceived because uh, the, the greatest deception at the end times will be the religious deception and we're going to look at that uh, now and then following the in the track of this religious deception there will be a great falling away a great falling away will happen first before the Antichrist will come now this is powerful you you may need to know why but know that also at the backdrop there is also the rise of anti-semitism and uh, Christian persecutions the church is waiting for rapture right now you know the next step for the church is rapture we know the step the present step for the church is to preach the gospel uh, to all nations and then this end of the end times will come um, the way we live is like in the Exodus we plead the blood of Jesus we are protected under the blood of Jesus that's how it is for the end time situation we are under blood protection the world is under a, a Pharaoh that is you know sucking them dry but let's watch this thing there will be a great falling away before the Antichrist would come let's take a look at the scripture uh, 2 Thessalonians 2 1 to 4 the scripture says now brethren concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together with him now this this is two things now our gathering together to him is rapture the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is his second coming with us the bride of the Lamb for we will rapture first the dead in Christ those who are sleeping you know dead in Christ they will rise first and then us who are living and you know alive on the earth then we will be taken up together to meet Christ Jesus in mid-air 
And Jesus, our bridegroom, will bring us into our eternal abode. And the scripture says in John 14, Jesus said, I will gather you to myself. Gather you to myself. How do you enter into the kingdom of God? You enter into the person of Jesus to go into the kingdom of God. That means he opens up to you. You go in. Nobody sees you anymore because you're inside. Powerful. Powerful, powerful. Now, rapture is for the church. The I should say the bride of the Lamb that is ready for him. Waiting for him. Now, after the seven years uh, of, you know, the Lamb's uh, marriage supper in heaven with Jesus Christ, then we will come back with Him on the earth. The earth will have, will have to go through this torturous seven years of tribulation with the Antichrist there. But the greatest, uh, the greatest destruction is the wrath of the Lamb. The anger of Christ, the wrath of the Lamb poured out onto the earth. It's tremendous. And then, when the Antichrist and the false prophet being taken by Jesus as he comes back, they will be thrown into the lake of fire, life. And the devil will be put into the bottomless pit for 1,000 years. And we shall reign and rule with Christ together with the, the remnant of the Jews. 100% remnant of the Jews will, will get saved. And they together with us, with Christ, we shall reign on the earth for 1,000 years, the coming of Jesus Christ. Now, we ask you not to be so soon, uh, so shaken, so we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or trouble, neither by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. There is a teaching out there that people are welcoming the 1,000 years of Jesus to rule and reign on the earth. That it is, there is a group that is working toward this and say Christ is coming in this short time without the last seven years for the Jews. Now that's a fake uh, a fake um, teaching. Do not be troubled, whether by spirit, by word, by letter, no matter what form it comes to you. In Jesus' name, we do not be deceived. Amen? Now, so the day of Christ has not come. Let us, uh, let no one deceive you uh, by any means. Let no one deceive you by any means. Why? Because the Spirit of Truth, the anointing inside of us, Holy Spirit, leads us into our truths. 1 John 2, 19-20 Now for the day will not come unless... Now this is powerful because the falling away comes first. That means if people on the earth are fully deceived... Now this is powerful. If the people on the earth are fully deceived, then they can give the platform to welcome the Antichrist, to reign and rule. Now the Antichrist has tried many times. Yes, it is in the days of Daniel, where Daniel also prophesied concerning how the Antichrist type of um, tyrant uh, leaders, like um, Antiochus the Third and the Fourth, Antiochus the Fourth, that came to destroy Jerusalem. But he was taken out. Those Antichrist personality that seek, that sought to take the Jewish people out, those ones across history, they have shown up to try to take away Jerusalem, to try to annihilate the annihilate the, the whole uh, the whole Israel. But they cannot. Now, if those people at that time were given to Antichrist, then. Antichrist would have come then at that time. We are so thankful it is not the agenda of the devil that is maneuvering the earth. No. It is God that is maneuvering the whole thing to take out the devil and the kingdom and the prince of darkness and to bring in the kingdom of light. This is powerful, powerful thing we need to know. God is in control. Now, the great falling away will come. Later on, uh, let's turn to the scripture, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, I think it's verse 9 or 11. Now, the coming of the lawless one will be in accordance 
with how Satan works. He will use all sorts of displays of power through signs and wonders that serve the light. So when we serve God, we must be attracted by God, by God's character, not by signs and wonders. Yes, there are many miracles, signs and wonders, but we are not. Uh, we want to see through all those and to see that it is God's holy power that works signs and wonders and miracles through the name of Jesus Christ. But you know the Antichrist, that is uh, the second person of the, holy, uh, the unholy trinity, which is the devil, that is the liar, and also uh, the Antichrist that wants to take out the truth of Jesus Christ, is anti-Jesus Christ. And then the false prophet wants to come against the Holy Spirit. Anyone that comes against Holy Spirit, blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. There is no forgiveness of sins for those people. Now, the devil used all sorts of things to deceive the people and all the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing. Now, watch this. If people would accept Jesus, the deception would not come upon them. Deception would come only upon those who are perishing. Why are who are those who are perishing? They are the ones who refuse to love the truth so that they can be safe. If you love the truth, you can be safe. If you don't love the truth, you will not be safe. Okay, now let's go back to the PowerPoint. Now it says here, the great falling away would have to come first because people will leave truth. They will not want to hear truth. Then you know they are the seed. They are the tares. They are the seed of tares. They are not the seed of weeds. Angels will come and take them out at the end. Now this great falling out comes, so everybody will be deceived, then they welcome the Antichrist. That means the church will rapture first, because the Holy Spirit who lives inside of us restrains that, this thing, restrains the Antichrist. They cannot, he cannot show up as long as the church is here. He can be around, but he cannot show up. Isn't that powerful? <laughs> God is amazing. Hallelujah. The man of sin until the... Okay. The day, that means Christ, 1,000 years of millennial rule, will not come unless the great falling out. It's not talking about us, the Christians. You know, we rapture already. So that day, which is... It has to be the 1,000 years of Jesus' millennial rule. It cannot come until the great falling away, and they open the platform for the Antichrist to come in. The man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now this part of it is the three and a half years later, after the peace treaty was signed. They have three and a half years of great peace at the beginning. After that, great slaughter, especially for the Jews. Now, the Bible prophecy in the end times continues. As we are coming uh, to the end of the very end, we need to understand that now concerning uh, religion, religious conversion. Okay, Everything is converging to become one. The, from the un, ungodly or unholy trinity, the devil, the antichrist, and the false prophet, they have a convergence. They have one group that comes into their unity. Whereas for believers, those who are in the Holy Trinity, Father God, Son Jesus Christ, incarnate who come in the flesh, who had, who had come in the flesh, and who died for our sins and resurrected, and now has gone back to Heavenly Father, seated at the right hand of God, and then the Holy Spirit. We also becoming one with God, with Father God, with Holy Spirit, with Jesus. This is waiting for rapture. Now, watch now, there is a religious movement that is happening for quite a few years now. It is called the United Religions Organization. You call it the UR. Now, you know that this one started from the root of Masons. This is the Mason, Masonic New World Order. They have a long-standing goal of wanting a united, everything becoming one church. They call it the church. <clears throat> they have a few people who, I mean, quite a few leaders who work together. 
the uh, Communist uh, Gorbachev Foundation, USA, with also Bishop William Swing uh, from California and quite a lot of significant Roman Catholic um, religious leaders. They got together, they walked through the, uh, the World Conference on Religion and Peace in order to form a One World Church. This is in place already since I think it's 1995 or so or on. Before, before uh, Mother Teresa passed. Now, this united religion now, they, they, they are meant for all religions and also all nations. Now, they want it to be a permanent place, a permanent hub for world religions to get together. They can have their daily prayers, their religious dialogues, their music, they share their music, their products, their cultures, everything. It's a convergence, it's a coming, a blending, okay? I should say, in Christ's sight, it's a mixture. And God doesn't like mixture. Now, it is, this thing is growing underneath already, since the 1995. This is to replace the light of Jesus Christ to the earth. It is stated now. The United uh, Religions is the light of the world's spiritual tradition. They embrace or they included cults and occult and also paganism. All means of quote what you call religion, they embrace and they put together as one. So this is happening right now. And then you have the Abrahamic uh, court. Oh, you can check the, um, can we check this thing? The, um, the link and you can show it. Yes. Now the Abrahamic Accords, the root of it, okay, it is to honor Abraham. Yes. And also um, they have a role of Abraham involved in this thing. But it is to honor Abraham. The patriarch to three world religions. They say all three religions stem from him. Now this is not biblical. You see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Judaism, Islamic, and Christianity, they trace through the bloodline. Now, of course, Judaism, we know that that's Jewish people. Islam, we know that Ishmael, or Ishmael, um, the son of a slave girl, Hagar. And God also blessed him to prosper on the earth. And Christianity, now, those who believe Jesus as Lord and Savior, they want to put all three together and uh, say that this is Abrahamic Accord. And then, this Abrahamic Accord at the beginning, it, uh, at the beginning it was a series of treaties to normalize the relationship between Israel and other nations. Especially, um, this is mentioned now, Bahrain, which is the Persian Gulf, Sudan, Morocco, United Arab Emirates. Now, this is to normalize their relationships, trying to make peace. And then, now this is by year 2020 now, so after a few years it has been developed. And then, uh, this Abrahamic Accord, this is the quote, quotation taken from one of their sites. They say that it is a global beacon of religious tolerance, coexistence and inclusion. Now, inclusion. Some has asked a question, is Christianity, uh, you know, exclusion of all religions? The key is, Jesus himself is Lord. Jesus himself the Lord of one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He says, I am God, and there's no other. That's all. We don't go into whether it is or not, because it's religious level. This is on just religion. Believing in Jesus is outside of religion. Yes, you have a living relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> now, can we have the um, picture? Okay, of this Abrahamic Abraham Accord, and also uh, their place. This they have a they have a site for it in Abu Dhabi. You didn't find it yet. It's coming. We'll wait for the slide. I mean the video. Thank you. 
Can you enlarge it? So, This is the mosque. This is the mosque. That's what it should look like from morning to night. The one with the triangle <laughs> supposed to be like the arc. Synagogue. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Okay, now we know the root of this thing. It is to honor Abraham. And um, because the place is now open, I should mention it. This one with the triangle thing is a synagogue. No, what they call, that actually is a Roman Catholic thing. They call it the church, and that's a mosque. Uh, this one world religion religious center they wanted to open it last year last year february but it did not uh, happen so on february the 16th 2023 it was announced that it is opened so now it's full-fledged uh, a center encouraging one world religion is coming forth blooming right now in year 2023 it seems like year 2022 is uh, sparking up of wars and rumors of wars uh, and nations fighting against nations and kingdom against kingdom this one going into uh, the convergence of religion is now full um, 
just being announced. This is a One World Religious Center. Anyone who wants to go there to tour, to visit, or to go there and worship, you can do that, you know, with people who wanted to go for these kinds of experiences. But what did the Lord say? Scripture comes. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Should, we, should, I, should I encourage you to go and visit? <laughs> I guess you know my answer. Second <laughs> Corinthians 6, 14. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Belial? Belial is the nickname for the devil. Or what does... He has a nickname, you know. <laughs> or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever. What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will live with them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. And that's the biblical answer. It is also my answer. We align with the Bible. Amen? Okay, let's go back to the PowerPoint. Now, this would be very amazing for a lot of people because many rabbis are cheering for this because they're hoping for peace in the Middle East. We know the one who is peace, the Prince of Peace, has been nailed on the cross. There is no peace on the earth. Where can you find peace? Wherever Jesus is, there is peace. So they encourage you to go and worship. I've mentioned this before. That's a ROC church worship place. They call it the church. And this is like the ark. And this one is, you know what it is. <laughs> yeah. So our sister, Helen, she has sent a picture about the spheres and about the structures. They say that all three are one. Now, this is serious stuff, all three becoming one. So, what I want to mention is, uh, many people will go and tour this place, because it's now open. Many will go. And uh, there has been, um, there has been um, a report that documented all the pastors and the leaders who have signed um, who have signed an agreement with a convergence of uh, all religion. And uh, they mentioned also Chris Lam, C-H-R-I-S, for Christianity, Lam, for Islam. So they say Chris Lam, the convergence of the two together. Over 4,000 leaders in the world had already signed that um, piece of document. So you'll be surprised if you, if you look at the list of all those uh, leaders. But it's up to you to go and search it. But what I want to say is, now, uh, the end time deception, the greatest is religious deception. First Timothy 4, 1 to 5 says, and then you turn to um, Revelation chapter 18. First Timothy 4, 1 to 5 says, now the Spirit expressly says, this is who says? Holy Spirit. If you have the Holy Spirit, you are born again. If you have the Holy Spirit, you will not blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. A blasphemer of Holy Spirit will definitely be in the lake of fire. He cannot be or she cannot be forgiven. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the last times or later times, some will depart from the faith. People living, not just church building, but leaving Christ Jesus the head. Leaving truth is a divorce. Departure from truth is a divorce, is a spirit of divorce. Giving heed to deceptive, deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Now, I want to mention just one case to let you know. Please be very careful. There is a literature or document that is out now concerning charismatic movement. The overspill of that. One track of it has become the worship of other things. 
So you have to be very careful. We are not joining any movement, and we are not pro any movement, but we just want to be in Christ, live for Christ, and do what Christ says we should do, the body of Christ, which is the bride of the Lamb waiting for Christ's coming. Now, we were called to visit a family. We don't know that family. And as we went in there, we found out that uh, the so-called Christian lady, she was pursuing to speak in tongues, and uh, pursuing, um, I think, you know, just some sort of an experience in the Lord. And she was watching, uh, she was in the Zoom with somebody, they were watching some type of teaching, and then I was told that, that um, somebody told me now that um, she, she was kind of um, deranged. She was kind of like uh, all of a sudden becoming, you know, something is wrong with her because she has gone into praying for speaking in tongues and uh, wanting to have spiritual experiences. And now we went to visit and we cast out demon from that person. The person vomited, you know, like a to glue, you know, those kind of a, it's saliva thing, but you know, very thick and slimy thing, you know, demon spirit. So what I want to say is, make sure you stay in the truth and acknowledge the truth. We know from the book of John 8, the Bible says, you acknowledge the truth, Holy Spirit is there with you. Wherever the Spirit is, there is freedom. And if you acknowledge Jesus, the Son of God, you acknowledge the truth. The truth sets you free. You acknowledge the truth, you are free indeed. Because there are many religious types of informations that will be blooming and being thrown into the internet. And if you are not careful, and if you are not in the, in the Lord, in the Word, you need to be anchored in the Word first, before you get into the spiritual realm. Without the word, you go and pursue, you know, oh, this is how I feel. I see something. Jesus doesn't say that. <laughs> yes, then you need to be very careful. Those are not the things to pursue. If you see a vision, keep it to yourself. If you see a dream, and if you are like, wow, oh, you're fascinated by something, if it is not Christ Jesus, drop that. Because you know why? Religious deception in the end times is the greatest. Jesus did say, let no man deceive you. Now, those people in the later times will depart from the word of God, from the truth. They will give heed to deceptive spirits and doctrines of demons. So I believe that person may have given herself to some doctrines of demons. You know, one thing, since we're talking about this, um, what I understand about uh, praying in tongues and speaking in tongues, it is not something that you want to say, blah, 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 and I speak in tongues. No. That's man initiated. How I speak in tongues? When I was young, I was led by Holy Spirit. He says, go out to take a walk. Now in my family, very protective family, you don't go out on your own. Always escorted. So I asked my family members, I said, I would like to go out for a walk. I'll be very quick and I'll come back. Nobody said no, you know. I said, oh, this must, this must be the Holy Spirit. <laughs> where, do you, where are you going? I'm going to go around just one circle and I mentioned the place where I'm supposed to go and then I'll come back. They said, okay. So I went. Half we was asking, yes, you want me to come out? So I come out now. All of a sudden, boom, you know. I began to speak in tongues. Nobody touched me. Holy Spirit brought me out. Yes. And Jesus the baptizer come. It's Jesus the baptizer that comes to baptize us with Holy Spirit and with fire. If that Spirit comes to say, oh, I want to come and baptize you, if it is not the Holy Spirit, if it is not Jesus, no. Yeah, very careful. So the way I speak in tongues is, it just come from in here. I cannot control it. It just started. And then it was so loud. So 
I was going along the road, you know, and I saw somebody coming. I said, oh no, Holy Spirit, this is like, oh, oh, oh. and then Holy Spirit subsided. <laughs> oh, yeah. The first thing I know, Holy Spirit is so considerate. I was like, oh, I don't know what to do with this. Oh, I'm speaking in tongues and somebody is coming, you know. They're thinking, this is, what is this going on? But the person who walked past by, I was so happy. I looked at the person and said, Wow, again, you know, it began speaking again. Then I learned to control it. <laughs> yes. So, this is by the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus did it to me. Now, the other type is you can do it by the laying on of hands, by spiritual presbyters or elders of your church. When they see that you are ready to believe and to receive, then. Now, for this, the case that we dealt with, I heard the case is to just want to pray in tongues, just want to get into the spiritual realm. No, you cannot do it on your own. You must be, even the baptism of the Holy Spirit is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Then you are safe, okay? <clears throat> just to let you know, those who are eager, how to pray, you know, to speak in tongues. The other thing that, that comes, uh, first, first uh, Corinthians chapter 14, <clears throat> Uh, verse 12, if you want to, you know, there are people who desire spiritual gifts. Don't go and be jealous about other people having, you know, exercising spiritual gifts. Jealousy is never, never, uh, what do you call it, never endorsed by the Spirit of God. Don't be jealous about the other person who has so many gifts. Since you are eager for gifts of the Spirit, try to excel in those that build up the church. For say, for example, God gave me certain gifts. Why would He give me certain gifts? Because I arrive at a place where the people needs to be built up. It's never for me. It's always for the people, the body of Christ. So if God has given you so many gifts, you need to be very careful. Have you served a community of faith? Have you served a believer? If you have not served the believer, Holy Spirit may not stir up that gift in you. Plus, spiritual gifts do not belong to us. Spiritual gifts belong to the Holy Spirit who lives inside of us. Now that will make it clear for you. Hallelujah. Um, now, let's go back to PowerPoint. Um, second, uh, 1 Timothy 4, 1 to 5. Now there are people who speaking lies in hypocrisy. What God wants for us is be sincere, be open, but have wisdom to answer people. Jesus never gave himself to people because scripture says he knows what's in your heart. Never give yourself to people. Give yourself to the Lord, to the Holy Spirit who will tell you what to do and what to say. We pray that Father God, you would have mercy on us and grant us that we can be shrewd as serpent and tame as dove. For the glory of God in Jesus' name, in preaching the gospel. Amen? Amen. Now, hypocrisy must be out. A hypocrite can never enter into the kingdom of God. There are doctrines of demons coming out. In the end times, it will be all over the place. People will speak lies in hypocrisy. Now, having their own conscience seared as with a hot iron. Now, this one, conscience is very important. I want to differentiate this, even though this is not the topic for today. Since it comes, you know, I'll mention it. Um, those who, you know, there are two kinds of conscience. One is God conscience. That's the born again believer conscience. The other one is a seared or, fear or guilt conscience. Guilt conscience and God conscience. How do you know you are born again? If your heart always rise up and condemns you. You are not good enough. I tell you, you are not born again. If you have a guilt conscience, you are not born again. It's not up to you to say, I'm a Christian for so many years, but if you're always guilty and always feeling condemned, you are not born again. Because you know why? A born again conscience is a blood washed conscience. The blood is in our conscience. And the blood says, she is forgiven. 
she is blessed. She's a child of God. Who do you think you are? You know? And drive out all the demons. Who condemns the demonic spirits having the nature which is without truth will condemn? And also a human being, if you want to participate with the devil, you can become a person who condemns. That's the trait and character of a demon spirit. Very powerful. Now, our conscience is washed through with the blood of Jesus. Nothing can pierce through. You know that I am saved. You know that I'm born again. You know that I'm blessed by the Holy Spirit. And I can hear Father God. And Father God speaks to me. And the Lord Jesus reveals His truth to me by the power of His Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit is my counselor. And He counsels me about all truths. Now, that's a born again believer. If your conscience is seared, or conscience is marred, or conscience is guilt filled, you need to turn to the Lord Jesus and ask Him. You say, Lord, help me. Save me. How come my conscience always condemns me? How come I do not know or I don't believe the truth that I am not condemned? What happened to me? What lies have I believed from the demons? You should ask that question. What lies you have believed from the demons? You need to acknowledge the truth. The Bible says, acknowledge the truth, you shall be free. And when the Son of Man sets you free, you are free indeed. Hallelujah. Now for those people, Holy Spirit expressly said, in the later days, there will be these people there. Now, they, they are becoming religious, you know. They forbid marriage and command you to abstain from food. You have to fast. Fasting is good if you are prompted by the Holy Spirit. If you do not fast, nothing is wrong. Right? Jesus did say, for some demons, you need to fast to cast them out. The deaf and mute spirit. So you need to know the context of fasting. Don't say, oh, I'm a Christian, but I did not fast. I may not be a Christian. No, no, no. There was one famous uh, healing evangelist. His name is Oral Roberts. People came and asked him, how many days do you fast? He says, I have never fasted my entire life. Oh, you cast out demons. Yes, by the power of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yes. You know what he said? No, Mark chapter 2. He says, <clears throat> How can the friends fast when they are with the bridegroom? Because the John the Apostle, uh, I mean, the uh, John the Baptist disciples came and asked Jesus, How come the disciples eating? You know, eating, eating and drinking away, celebrating, you know? They're with the bridegroom. Let them celebrate. No fasting. Jesus said, What did Jesus say? How can the friends of the bridegroom fast when the bridegroom is with them? You know? But when Jesus Christ is not with them, then they should fast. That's what he said. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I'm trying to get to the <laughs> slides. <laughs> All these things, commanding people not to get married, abstain from food, which God created to be received with thanksgiving. Now, watch this. Those are religious activities done by non-believers. They don't believe in the Lord. But for us who believe and know the truth, we receive all the blessings, every good things from God with thanksgiving. Amen? The difference between a believer and a non-believer also, one of the traits, is a heart of thankfulness is for the believer. Non-believer, they are not thankful, neither considerate. Only when you have Father God's love, you can be considerate. If you don't have Father God's love, with the capacity of human love to, you know, to sustain, no, you cannot. Now, for every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. So pray, Jesus said, you know, watch and pray, so that you will not fall into temptation. Watch and pray. He says, your spirit is willing, but your body is, is weak, you know. So, prayer, knowing the Word of God, and speaking in thanksgiving the Word of God all the times will keep you. Hallelujah. Now, 
2 Corinthians 11, verses 13 to 15. For such men are false apostles, deceitful uh, workmen, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. That's the lake of fire for them. Now, false apostles will go into the church. Don't, if you are a church leader, don't simply claim that you are an apostle. Apostle would be appointed by the Lord and he, he would send his prophets to confirm you. Otherwise, if you say, oh, I feel that I'm the head, I'm the apostle, you will be in trouble with the Lord. <laughs> he did not appoint you. Hallelujah. Now, false prophets would come deceiving because they disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Walking with a flaring rope, you know. <laughs> yes. Thus says the Lord. But it didn't happen. Watch out. <laughs> Watch out. They would go to their destruction anyway. Don't join them. And don't receive them. John, first John, two, second John, second John. I think it's verse nine. Second John. This is good time also for us to clear out some of the garbages, you know. Now, anyone who runs ahead and does not continue in the teaching of Christ does not have God. You know, most likely they go above and beyond. Above and beyond is never good. Now, they do not have God. Whoever continues in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. The temptation is you take the word and you go outside of the word. That's running ahead. We are never meant to run ahead of Jesus Christ. We stay within and that's called obedience. Willing obedience is never in the heart of those people who pervert the truth. There is no willing obedience. Yes, watch out for that. Now anyone who runs ahead does not continue in the teaching of Christ, do not have God. The person does not have God. And we, we stay in the Word, we have both the Father and the Son. Now, if anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not take them into your house or welcome them. Now, if you have welcomed the cult groups, whichever kind they are, you repent. If you have brought them into your house for Bible study or whatever um, activities, Christian, they call it their kind of activities, then you repent and turn from them. It could be one of the reasons why your life is not prospering. Is because there is still an unrepented sin concerning dabbling into what we call the cult and the occult. If you have uh, gone into those places and invited them into your homes, you need to repent so that that sin will be forgiven you and then you are free from the entanglement. Otherwise, they follow you. Do not welcome them. Anyone who welcomes them shares in their wicked work. That's what it is. So, God cannot bless you. I have much to write to you, but I do not want to use paper and ink. Instead, I hope to visit you and talk with you face to face so that our joy may be complete. Now, there is this key thing here. For believers, there is also the, there is always the joy of the Lord with us. And if you see someone, <clears throat> that's not the Lord. There's no joy. You know, there's no joy. If you are a believer of the Lord Jesus, when people see you, let them rejoice. And not when people see you, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Huh? Uh huh. Okay. I guess we understood. Yes. Uh, PowerPoint, please. Now, let's mention a few. One more thing. Yes. <clears throat> now, Luke 21, 34 to 35. I want to mention this one first. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape. That's rapture. Watch, 
and praying always, all the time, remaining in the Holy Spirit, praying with the Holy Spirit, and praying, um, and let the Holy Spirit pray through you. Watch and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape those things that will come uh, to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. That means not everyone who calls themselves Christians will experience rapture. Only those who are watching and praying count yourself worthy to escape. It's a powerful phrase. That means you acknowledge Jesus no matter what. That means you want to honor Him no matter what. Be with Him. Now take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life. These things will happen to the people. You know why? The end times is full of all kinds of things that cause people to worry. It's wars and rumors of wars, famine, pestilence. That's enough, you know, to cause people to become to become sad and to become depressed if they do not have God. Their hearts will weigh down and then they will give themselves to the desires of their flesh and the cares of this life. Where to earn money? COVID-19. All the stores are closed. Is the bank going to close? You know, what's, what about my job? Now those things happen. Cares of this life. It's worse at the end. You'll be worse at the end. <clears throat> Those now rapture means uh, harpazo means to be snatched away. It's such a quick snatch within the blink of an eye. Even the devil would not notice it. Now after we are taken, everything on the earth is trapped. Everything on the earth is trapped. No one can escape. That's how bad it would be if you are not snatched away. It will be horrible at the end. But they cannot escape. A sneer means they will be caught suddenly and they will not be aware of it. But it's too late for them. But they cannot come out of it. Anyway, <coughs> how come there's a blank page? Huh? <coughs> Interesting. Okay. Now, what I want to say is, uh, Timothy 4, 6 to 11, let's turn to look at it. We'll read from 6 to 16, I think. Okay. 1 Timothy chapter 4, <coughs> verse 6. Now, I want to mention verse 12 first, you see. Let, hello, verse, okay, yes. Do not let anyone look down on you because you are young. What is the word young for? Spiritual age. If you are 80 years old, you accepted Jesus Christ, that very year, you are one year old. <laughs> That's interesting. Yes? But if you are 12 years old, you accepted Jesus Christ, and then you grew to be 42 years old, you are 30 years old. Hallelujah? Yes. Now, do not let anyone look down on you because you are young the faith. But set an example for the believers. You know? Now, young also, there are two aspects to this. Young people, the children. Um, but set an example for the believers in speech. Speech. Have you been confessing Jesus and Jesus things? Or confessing your problems? And this one is like this. That one is like that. Oh, I don't like this. Which one are you confessing? Hmm? Which one have you been confessing? Hmm. Now, in speech, be like Christ in your speech. In your conduct, do things like Christ Jesus. Not coming into the room. Hmm. I'm coming to help you. Now, that's scary. <laughs> that's very scary. Now, in love, in faith, and in purity, God is holy God. I pray for the holiness of God. To so feel favor international church here and worldwide, yes, that the holiness of God will be in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, until I come, devote yourselves to the public reading of scriptures, to preaching and teaching. We need to get involved with this before, um, even before Christ Jesus comes. 
This is before Paul visited his church. Do not neglect your gift, which was given to you through prophecy, when the body of elders laid their hands on you. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourselves, give yourself wholly to them, so that everyone may see your progress. Now, this is powerful. If someone did not see your progress, you have to ask the question. If you say, I'm a believer, 30 years later, I'm a believer, and there's no change in you. <laughs> not, not midget, but, um, you know, like dwarfed. No, you don't want that. Hallelujah. If you see a little baby, you know, two and a half years old, jumping and saying, ah, 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 ah. Oh, you say, very nice, right? You're happy. But if you see a midget elderly, <laughs> you know, same size, and going, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> you will be shocked, huh? You will be shocked, isn't that? Huh? Let everyone see your progress. What is progress? You want to pursue the Lord Jesus Christ and be like Him more and more and more and more. Hallelujah! I pray in Jesus' name. No midget anything in our church. Yeah, in the body of Christ in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now, watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them, because if you do, you shall save both yourself and your hearers. Watch your life and your doctrine closely. Yes, stay in the truth, closely, in the end times. Hallelujah. Now let's go back to the PowerPoint. We're going to close with this. Oh yes, cleanse yourselves from ungodliness and join with the godly. 2 Timothy 2, 21-25. 2 Timothy, chapter 2, yes, those who cleanse themselves from the letter or anything unclean will be instruments for special purposes, made holy, useful to the master, and prepared to do every or any good work. In a large house, there are articles. You know, <clears throat> I had a dream. I had a dream. I was in a huge, humongous house. And I went to the counter of this. Likely, it doesn't look like a, it doesn't look like that is a kitchen, but it's like the dining place is over there. This is a whole huge cupboard. All the vessels, cups, saucers, you know, all those things. One thing very significant to me is they're all white. I like colors. I see the oh. How come all these are white? This is my first question, you know, to the Lord, to Father God. It's Father God's house. How come they're all white? And no, you cannot distinguish one from the other. Same, you know, white is white, you know. Then I go, what's wrong with this? This is do something with them. Do something with them. That means I need to put color on and, you know, make sure that they're okay. I mean, the whole parade of them. It was interesting. In an art house, this reminded me of the dream I had. In the large house, there are articles, not only of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. Some are for special purposes, and some for common use. Which one are you? Special purposes. Raise your hands. Special purposes. Raise your hands. Yes. If you are not before, now that you raise your hands, an indication of your change. Hallelujah. Yes, we want to be God's noble vessels. Yes. For noble purposes. Flee from evil desires of youth. Pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So I pray, <clears throat> let's go back to the PowerPoint. I pray in Jesus' name that we will, yes, we pray in Jesus' name that we will become holy and clean vessels that the Lord will use, and that Father God will put in us everything of His own good. The Holy Spirit fill us. And that Father God will give colors to all. Hallelujah. All the vessels that are insignificant, that looks like you look like him and he looks like she, you know, no, no, no. There is no mixture in the house of God. In Jesus' mighty name, I declare for everyone who is willing to sanctify yourself and to rededicate yourself to the Lord, you want to be a holy vessel noble vessel that God would use. You declare this together with me. You say, Father God, as I come before your presence, I thank you so much for your presence. Father Lord, help me. 
I want to serve you. I want to be one who carries Jesus, the carrier of Jesus, the carrier of Father God and of Holy Spirit. Help me, Lord. Help me to be the vessel you want me to be. I surrender my all to you. Do it unto me. In Jesus' name, Amen. And I pray, Father God, that you would touch us. Holy Spirit, you would alert us and make us aware of your teaching so that we will know each day to pray to you, bring us to come close to you, and that you would spark it up in us that we may repent and turn from all of our sins. The personal revival that will happen to each one of us first before the great revival will spark up. So Father God, we are here. We welcome your presence to come and your revival to come. In Jesus' mighty name, we surrender our all. Amen? Amen. Let's worship him in truth and in spirit.
miracle is so great, even the miracle of resurrection. Thank you, Father God, that you bring us life. We worship you in truth and in spirit. In Jesus, mighty name. Let's declare our faith in the Lord. Let's follow the footsteps of Jesus. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Let's follow the Lord Jesus. Let's receive his benediction right now. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord, oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Turn his face. <clears throat> thank you, Lord. Yes, may, his, may he turn his face towards you and grant you his grace. And may he lift up his head towards you 
and grant you his peace. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. You know the, the verse about Father God lifting his face to bring grace to us is that Father God lifts us up that we may be higher than him we lift him up like this in great joy and celebration for us he lift up his head to look at us and grant us that grace hallelujah thank you Jesus now let's uh, take a look at our yes announcements every Thursday night at 7 p.m. we have a bilingual service which is called the hour of victory it's at 7 p.m. and it's bilingual English and Mandarin we welcome you to come into the already established reality of Jesus Christ on the cross. Once you enter in, you are blessed, you are safe, you are delivered, and you know the destiny God has for you, and you are His children. Welcome mm -hmm. to join us. Insights for the week is what Father God puts in my heart, that scriptures, those scriptures. And then I'm going to share with you so that we can pray together and line, align ourselves together with His Word. He is powerful, powerful God. We are so thankful that every time He provides His scriptures for us. Now, wow, trump the enemy, yes. Saturday, March the 4th, come dress up everybody to the extent that we don't know you, yes. And then, in your appearing, <coughs> then we will see, yes, then we will see the truth of who you are, oh yes. Now, this is a very important feast. It is a feast of Purim. It is God's victory over all his enemies. This is powerful. Um, that Purim day, that festival of Purim, falls on the 6th, 6 p.m. to the 7th, uh, 6 p.m. But because our English worship service is on Saturday, so we celebrate early. Yes, we celebrate early, come dress up, and then we're going to tell you the answer as to why this is happening. Just a clue for you, there is no mention of the Word of God in the book of Esther. Ah, hallelujah. Okay, uh, the Chinese one is uh, Sunday, 2 p.m. And uh, is March the 5th, Sunday, 2 p.m. So you will see us dress up and we're going to have fun celebrating the hidden God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. See you next time. Now, before that, remember... To plead the blood of Jesus over the doorposts and the door frames of your hearts. The angel of destruction has to pass over. You have the lamb inside. Jesus is with us. Emmanuel, God with us. See you next time.